What's up guys, this is Tito back with another custom ROM video and this is the official AOSP extended ROM for Redmi Note 5 Pro. So let me show you how is it. It has a moderate pixel launcher by default which has Google Now cards to the left side of the home screen. You can swipe down anywhere on the home screen to get to the notification drawer. Nightlight is working fine in this ROM. The quick settings panel is dark because the wallpaper I have right now is mostly dark. Here is the launcher settings in case you are interested. You can customize this launcher heavily. You can customize the home screen, the app drawer, app icons and some other options present over here. And we have double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen for this launcher which is cool. Figmabit scanner is working fine here. Let me show you the display settings now. We have night light option over here too and of course you can control the intensity of it from here. We have double tap to wake feature working fine here in this ROM. We have ambient display working fine here, it does wake up with notifications. You can change the UI style from here and you can change the accent colors too. So you don't have to worry about customizing this ROM. Let me set it to extended UI now which turns the UI to dark and green, kinda hulk look. From sound settings, you have option to disable or enable the lock screen sounds, charger plugging in sound or even volume adjustment sounds. I left most of them disabled because I feel they are annoying. Moving on to the about section, we have the cool AEX logo on top. Tapping on it doesn't do anything. Based on Android 8.1 of course. Security patch is of May 5th 2018 and this is the 3rd June 2018 build by the way. Now let's go back and inside extensions, we have all the customizations of this ROM. Inside status bar, we have status bar items like headset, bluetooth, vault DE, etc icons and vault DE calls does work fine over here but I think native video calls simply does not work but the call volume is too low to my liking I have to say. Next we have clock and date customizations. After that we have status bar battery styles like circle, square and much more. Next we have battery bar option, I don't like this one so moving on. Now we have network traffic indicator and carrier label. Inside MISC we have option to enable 4G icon instead of LTE. Double tap to sleep on the status bar option is present here and brightness control by sliding a finger on the status bar is present here. Both works fine here by the way. Inside notification panel we have quick settings panel customizations. You have a lot of customization options here including the option to scroll small quick toggles. You can customize the column and row numbers. You have this rotate or flip animation for quick toggles but you need to restart the system UI after you set it up. Next in notifications we have heads up and some other options are present here. In navigation, we have the software nav bar settings. I am using smart bar here, so that's why my nav bar looks opposite kinda because I already customized it. I even further customized the recent button long press action to take a screenshot, as you can see. Inside edge gestures, we have the navigation gestures. Yes, it does work fine. I have to say, it's not quite there yet if you compare it to MIUI gestures so I am not simply using it by choice. It should work fine if you customize it a little bit. From recents, you can customize the recent apps panel of course. You have this memory bar option over here. You can lock a particular app to keep in memory. And there is a clear all button too of which you can customize the position and stuff like that. After that, we have lock screen customizations. In here, we have face auto unlock, which I'll be showing you later on. 
We have double tap to sleep on the lock screen option and charging info showing option here. Moving on to system general tweaks. Here we have screen of CRT animation option and in call vibration options. Three finger gesture is present here but it does scroll the screen so in most cases it's not that usable I have to say. And we have some notification LED customizations here which does work. Next we have animations control. Here we have Android P animations if you are into that. Let me give you a demo with and without the P animation option. As you can see it works and you can customize the whole UI animation from here. Moving on to buttons, we have power button torch, which does work fine. Here is a demo. And we have some other customizations here. And next, we have system app remover. Talking about the bugs, well, this or any other banking app simply does not work in this ROM. The stock camera app is not that good. It takes underexposed pictures, but you can install Google Camera Mods and make it better with Camera to API. If you want to do that and if you don't know how to do it, here is a card for you. We have this AEX wallpaper app over here. The retro music app is present over here by default, but it does not work, it just four stops, I don't know why. The ROM is smooth but the bugs over here are a bit annoying. So bug number one, the RAM management is not that good at all for daily driving in this ROM as most of the apps ends up reloading every time you try to open them from memory. So that's really annoying. Bug number two, if you connect any Bluetooth device in this ROM, be it your Bluetooth headphones or Bluetooth speakers, no matter how hard you increase the volumes, there is no output from the Bluetooth devices. I mean no sounds at all via Bluetooth devices. I tried with my Bluetooth headset and the speaker, the results was the same. And if you are worried about full screen apps, yes it does work. All the apps just automatically uses the 18 to 9 display so you don't have to worry. Here is a demo of the gaming performance in this ROM and here is the enter to score of this ROM in case you are interested. In terms of the battery life, I have to say it's not that good but yeah, it can definitely last you a full working day. So I won't quite recommend you flashing this ROM when you have ROMs like leaked MIUI Global Stables and Betas and Resurrection Remix ROM and this ROM may get better with software updates as it's just the second official build. So if you wanna flash it on your device anyway, you have to have unlocked bootloader and TWRP recovery installed. Then you can just boot into TWRP recovery, wipe cache, Dalby cache system and data, then just flash the ROM and gapps and reboot. It's that simple. So that wraps up this video guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. And here is a quick demo of the face unlock speed. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't yet. Thank you so much for watching guys. This is Tito signing off for today and I'll catch you guys later.